everybody, Josh, your RV nerd of Bish's RV here with the floor plan I've been trying to track down for like two years. I think it's the physically largest member of the Alliance Valor family. And v Valor was one of the very first toy haulers that really kind of jumped out and spoke to me. Like I've never been like a real big toy hauler kind of guy, but these are, they're just a little more thoughtful. They're a little more fun than to me. They're a little more interesting than most other things out there. And this is their big uh, 42V13. It's got a giant side patio off the side of it. And I mean, it's basically an ultralight. It only weighs like 16,500 pounds, guys. It's not like it's too big or anything like that. But seriously, you are going to want to plan accordingly where you're going to take and where you're going to tow one of these because it is large enough. You're definitely in dually country and you got to plan ahead. What I love about this one, it's got that like flowing house party kind of feel. Like if you've ever been at one of those little get togethers where everyone can kind of run around and mingle and get in and out of the kitchen in different ways and somebody's on the patio and somebody's on the back porch. Like that's what this one is right here to me. But it doesn't necessarily have to be something where you're going to be throwing a whole block party in the RV. If you're just looking for like a really fun plush couple's experience with an awesome living room that doesn't really make a lot of sacrifices but still gives you a good sized garage where you could park a uh, like a side-by-side -side ATV in it, that's where one of these comes in. And why I stress ATV instead of ATV, I don't know, but that's what we're doing today apparently. Obviously good hot cold weather package, triple factory standard air conditioner on this, and uh, I believe 640 watts of factory solar with 100 amp hours of base factory lithium batteries. Now, that's all where this starts. You can add a generator to it, and you're going to see that generator on this thing. You can add their big super solar package and do a bunch of other cool things with it. But no matter what, this thing, um, V-A-L-O-R, I think that's how you spell fun, but I ain't exactly a good speller. And I think certainly it's this side patio that really defines this specific Valor within their, their family and their floor plan lineup. Uh, you know, it, it shares a lot of qualities with a lot of their other models, but that's really the thing that this one does the best that, you know, the others kind of don't do necessarily. And what's also neat about it is just kind of the whole flow and function this gives you. Like I said, the like you can weave your way around and figure eight your way through the RV. And it's just so cool to kind of come out here and just sort of be above the action a little bit. You know, if you got kids running around or friends or something like that at a picnic table down there, a couple chairs up here chewing the fat, shooting the breeze, you could have you know, various game day entertainment going on outside here on this thing. And I tell you what I would do, the, every time I look at something like this, I look right down below that TV and that is where I see the beer cooler sitting. That's, that's probably where the drinks would be located. Now remember, the best beer cooler has just the world's screeching, creaking groan every time you open it. Uh, that way, everybody has that one friend that brings the cheap stuff that's, you know, not amazing. Um, and uh, that's what they bring to kind of share. And then they drink not the stuff that they brought, but they drink everybody else's stuff. So it's kind of nice to be able to keep tabs on that and yell at old Uncle Gary every now and then or whoever it might be. Now, interesting thing with these, Valors and Paradigms, they have um, triple, basically standalone air conditioners. They're not uh, really ducted to one another. Now, your living room here has its own dedicated air conditioner. The garage has its own dedicated air conditioner. The bedroom and bathroom share one mini ducted air system. And what that's doing is it's eliminating uh, tons of inefficiency that you would otherwise have uh, in the RV's air conditioner system because like where the air ducting is uh, you know, up in the, the, the ceiling construction, it's getting hot. It's very, very warm up there. Imagine the attic of your home. Well, attic of the RV is not necessarily terribly dissimilar in that regard. So by getting rid of all that ducting, they make it far more efficient. Now, I gotta say, I've looked at this twice now and I had the same feeling both times. That upper corner, it just, it's one of the only areas in the RV that feels a little blank to me, but little areas like that or areas like that little wall up there, I think also create some unique sort of um, decorating opportunities. Now, I mentioned uh, how, you know, this, this one, it's, its purpose in the lineup, I think really is that side patio. But if I back up a little bit, one of the cool things about this one is that it does have a living and dining. It's not all kind of in one. It's not a, a, an RV floor plan where you get this one cool big sofa and then, um, you know, you, you have to like 
eat at it or you have to eat back in the garage. Like you actually have a dining table. There's not a whole lot of sacrifices that take place here. And it also has some pretty good definition of like separate kitchen versus separate living room sort of uh, as a result here. Now, very interesting note on this sofa, your right and left uh, seats, those are power theater recliners. The middle one is still a manual ripcord and you may have noticed that chunk of solid surface countertop popping up in there if you need it you can actually expand your kitchen space here and suddenly what looked like just a sink in the island kind of becomes very functional very very quickly and i really like how they uh give you some awesome toe kick space like right in front of the stove or the sink or whatever and they've been doing carpetless floor flush slides across from one another longer than just about anybody now this floor plan that is i think a 17 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge some of these they do have a little bit bigger uh unit but if they went larger, they would have had to sacrifice that pantry. And I, and I think that they, they still gave us a big fridge without, you know, going too stupid and losing all of the pantry kind of storage space. I do like that indirect lighting up there. You saw that um, uh, Max Air kind of vent fan system that we have. I tell you what, when you're sitting at this theater seat, dude, or, uh, you know, I, I say dude just because I don't know your names individually. So, you know, no offense meant there. Uh, but Mr. and Mrs. Dude... Uh, <laughs> You're staring right at this thing. Notice, though, the uh, the armrests actually have a little built-in cup holder. It can kind of pop open when you need it and shut when you don't. And being a full-on hauler, it is awful taller. Uh, and they utilize that to really give us as big and tall of a slide as they really possibly could. Now, crack it open all the storage here. Um, that, that TV can pivot around a lot. You can't make it necessarily face the dining area, but you can get a pretty good beat on everything else short of that. Um, there's also, man, there's a lot of storage in this kitchen, like more so than I think you realize when you first look at it. One of the things that's not super obvious though, there are, uh, like you look at it, you don't see a lot of kitchen outlets. They're under the overhead cabinets on either side of the stove or microwave, just in case you're kind of wondering. And they put like a big, almost like residential size stove and like a, a, a well, true fur burner stove and a big oven in this, which is great. Uh, the, uh, the shelving in the pantry, by the way, that's all adjustable and removable. So if you're looking for a place, uh, for like a, a big extra large waste basket or something like that, like you could repurpose that a number of different ways. Although I think I'd probably put a little waste basket right under the sink, but I could see somebody using that for pots and pans. Then again, that gigantic pantry space, that could also be some kind of pots and pansy, uh, so, <laughs> pots and pansy. I am tired by the way. Like my vo you might have noticed my voice is a little flatter and more nasally than normal. I have been going hard. Like to you, this is just another video coming out. To me, this is video number 40 in like five days that I've recorded. And I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the wall, man. This is going to be my last one for a while. Now, a couple neat things. They have a, uh, a, a cool water shutoff system here. We're going to talk about that more on the outside where it's a little more visible. But the Alliance employees are actually like really dedicated. One of the employees felt that the drawers could be improved. So what they did is um, underneath the drawer where you can't see it, down under here, they added some cross bracing and they did it just with some basically leftover scrap material that was just otherwise going to be thrown in like a recycler hopper, a uh, hopper, recycler, recycling hopper. Oh my Lord. Uh, I feel like a Scottish person trying to say purple burglar alarm. Like, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever seen it. That's very funny. They, they're, they, they, they struggle to say that phrase. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is the employees are very interested in making this better, which I think is cool. They are doing an all color-coded wiring system. And I don't know if you noticed, it's unconventional. They put their converter all the way up here. And that kind of freaks people out sometimes. But it's electricity. Man, it doesn't matter. It could be mounted in the roof if you wanted it to be. That would be weird. It doesn't matter where that's located. I think we're just really used to always seeing them by the floor. Nothing says it has to be by the floor. Now, you may have noticed now that we're carpetless, we're also ventless flooring. So that's a nice uh, kind of easy cleaning sort of function there. And their 101-inch, they call it benchmark chassis, their super wide-body chassis here, allows them to do some interesting things. It gives them the ability to give us a uh, dual entry and a big shower in the bathroom instead of dual entry or a big shower in the bathroom. Now, I didn't give you uh, a, a really long look at that half bath. I'm going to have to make sure I swing back to the garage space. It kind of occurs to me I'm way outside of my normal order of operations right now. Um, now, this toilet arrangement, it looks 
super spacious. Like it almost looks like it's sitting in the middle of nowhere. But the uh, the door framework over here, it's a little bit of an elbow bumper, so kind of keep in mind. But I do appreciate that that's a soft closed toilet lid because I tend to be a, a clumsy oaf and uh, you know slam stuff inadvertently. Now, if you take note. There's exceptional headroom in the shower. A couple brands have started doing this. I'm seeing Alliance do some of this. I'm seeing Grand Design do some of this. Um, they're actually recessing the shower pan down into the shower floor. And uh, as a result, they're creating additional upper deck headroom in that shower space that most brands are not doing. So if you are taller than the average bear, this might be a really good big RV option for you. Uh, now, keep in mind, that means that the rest of this upper deck I'm shooting from the hip is about six and a half foot tall, which isn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination. But the shower, you're gaining like an extra two, three inches, something like that. That ain't nothing, you know. Um, oh, by the way, let me back up just a little bit. Uh, up here in the bedroom, you do have dimmer lighting, which is actually kind of cool. Now, my camera starts flickering a little bit on the halfway through. My camera either likes the lights down or up. My camera doesn't like the lights in between. I don't know why. Uh, they've they've maintained the use of that Cyclops window above the bed, but theirs actually opens for airflow. And both sides of their bed have the household and USB outlets, um, you know, like right in the slide box, which is kind of cool. Now, uh, depending on what you're looking for, there's not like a really big side stand there. Like you're not able to set much more on that than just a phone. So, uh, you know, you, you may want to come up with some other kind of little side stand next to the bed if you want to be uh, like a little more CPAP comfortable or something. And that just does tend to be the case with it seems like most RVs with a bed in the slide. It's That's really more the rule than the exception. All the TVs we've seen, by the way are uh, smart TVs. That's a big 12-volt smart TV right up top there. And if you actually lay down in the bed, this would kind of be your view. You might notice how the TV's facing directly at us. You don't feel like you have to crane your neck around so much because they actually do downward mount the TV a little bit. And it's just those little thoughtful things that I like from this brand. Even up here in the bedroom, you still have the blackout roller shades for privacy. Um, down below here, you've also got what I like to call the flip-flop shop. You got a little place to, a, a little shoe garage built uh, right into that dresser space. Now, I've already got part of that uh, closet open, but giving you a look at all the storage here, their front closet is very symmetrical. What's interesting here is you have some dresser drawers on both sides. The middle section is where you could put a, a, a combo or stack, a like side-by-side -side washer dryer. But remember, the garage is also washer, washer dryer prep, so they give you a choice of where to put that. And those two big wide shelves in that middle section of the front closet are adjustable or removable. You can really kind of customize that space uh, in a number of different ways. And if you prefer um, more walk-around space around the bed uh, of a queen bed, you can take the king out. You do have to trim the, the, the wood decking under the bed a little bit, but uh, the bed base itself where that storage is, that itself is actually queen-sized. So, um, you know, if you, you need a, a little more room to walk around the bed, you can make that happen. But as I mentioned, I need to get you a more detailed look at that garage. I think because I kind of walked in there to look at the patio first, I sort of forgot, like I sort of checked it off my list, you know? Um, up top here, this is the same Happy Jack power bed lift system that everybody and their brother runs. I noticed that in, like that, that LED lighting, those vertical LED light beams though. The trick with a lot of toy haulers, the garages, especially when the beds are up, it looks really dim. Like you can leave just the sofas down during the day and leave the top bed up. But if you do that, if there were ceiling lights, you would kind of block those off. And it, uh, you know, it would be dim and dark and, and dismal in here. And those vertical light beams really kind of help that. And once again, you do still have that like kind of easy come, easy go uh, flow of the floor plan right here, which is one of my favorite aspects of it. But the, uh, the garage on this thing, Notice that you've got those, it's almost, it's almost kind of like um, the, the sort of like aircraft tie downs you find. And what I like about this is that it doesn't matter what you're loading in here. If there's only like nine dedicated tie downs, somebody's going to have to fight somebody else for a tie down. Well, there's, you know, I don't even know, 100? There's a hundred, tons of different potential tie down locations on this. Although, um, oh, I just ankle bashed one of these uh, steps that's sitting down here. That felt terrific. Anyway, I'm telling you, this RV nerding is a contact sport, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, what I was getting at 
is you've got two full length tie down strips uh, on the left and the middle. This one goes about two thirds of the way up, but you've got this big bulky wall here. That's the ramp patio. It actually does have to stick into the RV a little bit. So you lose just a couple inches up there, but eh, you know, it might be something kind of worth noting and worth thinking about. Uh, again, we do have washer dryer hookups back here in the garage space as well. And uh, finally, little look at the half bath. We're really staring straight down the barrel of that danger zone right there. Um, I'm going to name him Kenny, as in logins. <laughs> um, overall, the space around this was pretty fantastic. And I think it's really nice that they still include a dedicated sink in the half bath over here. And it's not like one of those little plastic sinks, like sometimes you see a manufacturer stuff into a shower. It's like just a real normal sink. Now, there's no real storage in this half bath, so that is something to kind of think about. But looking up top in there, it does have um, a, uh, a power ceiling vent fan uh, and light combo, just like you would have up in the main bathroom. They use the same hardware in both locations. Here's the thing, though. This is definitely a model made for being at a destination with that ramp and everything. When these slides close, you really ain't getting to nothing inside. Like, you could get to your front bedroom, you could get to the bathroom, you could get to the garage, but that's it. You're not getting to anything kitchen-wise. Now, kind of like we talked about when the video began, if we start talking towing, I think you're, uh, <laughs> very safely to say, minimum dually country on something like this. Um, it is a, it is a big rig. It is long. It is heavy. It has a chunk of hitch weight. You can put some serious cargo weight into it, whether it's in the form of, you know, bags of concrete mix or something like this here Polaris that they have. Oh, look, they even have, it's the Alliance Ranger. Um, not the same as the Ford Ranger or the Ford freaking Ranger, which is something else entirely also. Now, sometimes people ask with the ramp patios, how do you load stuff? I don't usually get a chance to demonstrate things like this, but the, the, the patio gate, uh, rails, they just basically hang out and never, never land. They just float in midair like Peter Pan. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, the ramp just drops down to the ground. Now, if you notice though, this has a couple things going on. It does have the, uh, the, the patio support cables, but it's also got this little drawbridge style tension band thing right there. And what that is, is it's um, basically a, uh, a ramp door assist because some of these ramp doors are, they're big, man, and they can get really, really heavy. And it can be a lot to physically heave, ho, throw the thing up and down, you know? It's kind of nice to have the, uh, the extra little help and assistance there. On the side here, you do have that uh, permanently affixed ladder. Uh, it does fold against the side of the RV when you're going down the road. That's one of the reasons these are 101 inch wide and not 102, because there are some manufacturers making a truly 102 inch wide body RV that by the time you, um, you know, you put an awning and stuff on it, it would uh, actually be technically too wide to go down the road without wide load placards and stickers. Well, you don't have that here. Uh, you've got some serious running gear in the sucker. Like you see the Moride CRE 3000 suspension package all over this. And uh, those are greasable wet bolt fasteners here. Something I'm really liking though, it's a single sewer outlet. That's fantastic. Even the half bath, I was really worried because like you've got a forward bath, a middle kitchen, and then a rear half bath, but they did manage to get everything plumbed together. And if you remember from that spec chart, they have some really aggressive holding tank capacities on these. Now this is kind of a newer for 24-ish sort of update here. They've had these easy um, valve bypasses for all their different um, you know, water fixtures, but they took it up another notch where now you can literally um, allow or, or, or like block and bypass the hot and cold water to every single fixture, which I think is really crazy and really cool. And I've never really seen manufacturers do things like that before. Now, working our way around here, your auto leveling controls are at a very easy to reach location. And I really love how like, um, Avenue or, uh, well, uh, Paradigm and Valor here, they, um, the, the, the top door for the that top cargo storage pocket, it flips up. The bottom doors open outward instead of opening, both of them opening up and folding over one another, which is kind of stupid. It makes it so that you can more easily access everything at the same time. Now, every single Valor here will come with a single 100 amp hour lithium battery, and there are options to apply more. I think you can fit like six of them in here and still have a little bit of space to spare. Battery disconnect up there. 
You do have a dedicated solar disconnect as well. A lot of manufacturers finally figuring out that that is something that we kind of need to do. Um, that is a, uh, I think a 60 amp charge controller. So you can actually, you know, re really put some decent solar on this thing. But by default from the factory, they're only gen prepped, which is kind of rare for a big giant fifth wheel toy hauler like this. But one of the things is they were one of the first to really focus on a heavy uh, amount of like 12 volt features and function, like that 17 cubic foot uh, 12 volt fridge that you have inside of this thing. Um, and, uh, you know, doing a decent factory solar package and including some level of lithium batteries right from the factory. Now, there's certainly, uh, you know, they have the capacity to go with like their super solar package and go, you know, plus ultra far beyond that. But um, they, they were doing it way before it was cool. Some other brands have since kind of caught up on that. But I really give Valor credit. I think Valor is one of the main reasons why. Now, if you look down here, it's actually a mini front drop frame. That's the thing that gives them room for that uh, NPS inverter generator. And if you're not familiar with that, what I like about that NPS generator is several fold. First of all, it's a, a, a true inverter generator. So you get nice clean power to all your household outlets and everything inside. But it also has a, uh, a, a key fob. It has a remote control to activate it. So if you're sitting inside in bed and the power goes out, you just grab your keys, push the button, fire up the generator, let the RV kick back in, let the air conditioner kick back on, go back to sleep. You don't even got to put on pants. And anytime I don't have to put on pants, it's a good day. <laughs> um, it also has a pull start on it. So just in case a battery dies, you still got ways to fire things up. Now, when they have that door side mega dining window and, and slide right there, but they didn't try to like bury an awning over it. So instead, what you have are two very respectably sized awnings and um the the side patio here it does include um side steps in this display for for the fire marshal basically they don't have the extra set of steps out but the extra steps actually latch right onto the face of that thing right there and you see that little center gate so you can have like a third campsite come and go door because you've got your your front living room and kitchen door you've got the uh, garage door off the side here and then of course uh, you could have the patio door, but you've also got a set of ramp, st or, uh, yeah, ramp steps that come included for the back deck. Although we are in ramp loading mode currently, but you get the idea. But nothing says you have to use those ramp steps if you're really not a big fan of those things. If you got like a you got a toddler running around, you want to try to keep track of them. You can you can do that. You know it's pretty easy. Now on the opposite side of the RV, kind of built into the skirting, that's where your fuel station is located. You have dual 30 gallon fuel cells on this. One's dedicated to the generator. One is separate totally, um, just in case you want to run like a, a higher octane fuel for your toys. That's normal. What is not normal though, and I love this, is that onboard air compressor. Because I, I don't care what camping trip you're on, whether it's checking air in the RV's tires, whether it's checking air in uh, you know the uh, the side by side or the four wheeler or motorcycles tires, or if it's just inflating some pool toys to go down to the beach, <laughs> instead of sitting there going <laughs> and getting a head rush and like passing out, um, <laughs> that thing is handy. And one last little detail here, I think I forgot to talk about this earlier. Your lights in like your living room and your bedroom, they're on dimmer switches, which is actually kind of handy. So let me know what you think about this one. I've done a few of these Valors so far, and I forgot that was a four-step. I did three, and then I took the last two at the same time. Thankfully, I got these Paul Bunyan long legs, and I didn't just go backside over tea kettle and managed to keep myself uh, composed here. When you're ready, we're ready. I'll leave you links in the video description. Um, I'll try to remember to leave some links to the other Valor videos that I've done or a couple of other big fancy pants, high-end fifth-wheel toy haulers in case you want to do a little bit of cross-comparison. Let me know kind of what you think about her. And, uh, I mean... Even if it's not all good news, um, I like I try to give you fair, real, candid feedback. I would like you to do the same. Share it back here with me. So when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees, but I will leave you a link in the video description to be able to check for pricing and availability. If we have one of these in stock, that website will show you where. It'll show you what we're asking. And if we're sold out, call our team. We'll take care of you. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.